I think everybody knows kiwi, the fruit of Actinidea deliciosa. It freezes at around 10 degrees below zero. It can be grown as an ornamental plant, but in Eastern Europe it doesn't develop flowers or set fruit. Not everybody knows that in nearly the whole of Europe, also in this part with a harsher climate, we can grow kiwi or mini kiwi, like the one I'm standing by right now. The fruit set on Actinidea arguta and Actinidea columnicta. Actinidea arguta's habitat is in Eastern Asia, in China and Japan. Its fruit is a couple of centimeters in diameter and smooth skinned. The plant is frost hardy. It withstands temperatures up to 22 to 30 degrees C below zero. It has pretty glossy leaves and its leaf petioli, as well as new shoots, are often red. It can be grown solely for its ornamental value. The plant is dioecious, which means that one type of plant grow female flowers with pistils, ovules, surrounded by barren stamens. Other plants grow male flowers with stamens producing active pollen. For the fruit to set, both types of the plant need to grow in the vicinity. Another species that endures in our climate is Actinidea columnicta. It has an attractive appearance. In spring, its leaves are green. In May, they are adorned with splashes of white and later in the season, they turn pink. Pleasantly scented flowers are born in May. It is dioecious too. The fruit ripen at the end of August and they fall soon after. They are tasty, sweet, two to four centimeters long. The plant is not suitable for production plantations because of the fast fruit fall, but in the garden this is not an unwelcome feature. Depending on the cultivar, Actinidea arguta fruit ripen from the first half of September till the second half of October. They are tasty and rich in vitamins, for example, vitamin C, PP, B1, B2, and in microelements such as zinc or potassium. They don't contain sodium or fats, which makes them a healthy dietary product. We can compare Actinidea arguta fruit and kiwi. Here we have examples of different varieties. I cut open a kiwi. Next to it is an Actinidea arguta berry of Geneva cultivar. We can see that the structure is the same, only these are smaller. Because the skin is smooth, we have to eat them whole without peeling. Some cultivars, like Jumbo, yield big fruit, comparable to kiwi in size and more convenient to eat. Here's a selection of fruit ripening around mid-September. This is Jumbo cultivar that yields the largest fruit. 
They can reach over a dozen grams, sometimes even more than 20 grams. It's an Italian cultivar. It survives temperatures up to 25 degrees C below zero. Geneva cultivar is one of the earliest to ripen. The berries are medium-sized, nearly square-shaped. They are very tasty, with a honey aroma. It is one of the earliest ripening cultivars, which is as soon as the first half of September. The berries here are green, because they were shielded by the leaves. If exposed to sunlight, they would blush like these, of wakey variety. Ken's Red, a New Zealand cultivar, also ripens relatively early. It withstands temperatures up to 23 to 25 degrees C below zero. Sun-exposed berries turn a purple color and are red inside. They are quite big and tasty. The Polish cultivar, Rugov, also ripens early. At the end of September and beginning of October, basic cultivars used in production plantations start to ripen. Wakey fruit are tasty and durable. They keep well even for 8 to 10 weeks in cool storage. Other cultivars' fruit can keep for four to six weeks. Ananas naya, deep red blushing fruit, can also be kept for quite a long time. It is a prolific cultivar, most popular for setting up a production plantation. Its fruit are even-sized and they are suitable for transport and storage. Another attractive cultivar is Paperna sadova that ripens at the end of September. It's prolific and its berries, when sun exposed, are purple outside as well as inside. It's quite tasty, but not as much as jumbo or wakey. Cultivars like Ice or Viti Kiwi ripen later in autumn. These cultivars are an exception in the Dioasi rule. They set fruit without pollination. Rarely used in production plantations, they are excellent for amateur gardeners. I say it's been in the market for over a dozen years. It has a lower growth rate than the other cultivars I mentioned. They can reach 6 to 10 meters and I say only 3 to 4 meters. It will also grow slower in a garden. Its leaves are less attractive, they're uniform green without splashes of red. The berries that ripen at the end of October are numerous, but they are all green and never blush red. 
An alternative for this cultivar is a novelty Viti Kiwi. Its growth rate is higher, the leaves prettier, the berries larger, and it is more frost hardy. I say withstands temperatures up to 22 degrees C below zero, while Viti Kiwi has survived winters when the thermometer showed 26 below. It is prolific and worth popularizing. These fruit are formed as a result of parthenocopy. They set without pollination. When you cut the fruit, you won't find seeds inside. However, if there's a male plant around and some of the flowers become pollinated, the crop will be more generous and fruit, with seeds inside, will be larger. It is therefore suitable for planting as a single plant as well as with a pollinator. Another parthenocarpic cultivar is Kokuva. It is of Japanese origin and yields not very large but tasty, sharpish tasting fruit. First of all, the fruit can be eaten raw. They make a tasty, nutritious dessert. They can be used as an ingredient in salads, cakes and other desserts. You can freeze them, dry them or preserve them in jams. They serve as a base for homemade wines and delicious infusions. Personally, I like to eat actinidea fruit raw on their own or make infusions, which are rather popular with my friends. I cut in half the fruit of one or more variety to provide good access of alcohol to the flesh. Then I put them in a jar and cover with 70% spirits. It needs a regular shake during the six to eight week soaking. Then I drain the liquid, set it aside in a bottle and add sugar to the jar, about one kilo for one kilogram of fruit. I mix it thoroughly. Sugar draws some of the alcohol from the fruit. After about two months, the sugar turns liquid. I drain it again and blend with the first infusion. About one part of sweet infusion with two or three of the dry one. I leave it for another one month or two and pour into small labeled bottles. It's tasty and original. Try it. Actinidia arguta cultivars are ornamental vines with edible, tasty fruit. I recommend them to every gardener. Besides, the plants are suitable for small or large plantations, which are not that hard in cultivation. My recommendation again. <laughs>